of the entire session. Okay, you can so begin now. If you yeah, yeah, begin. yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. we can uh, uh, maybe edit it and give it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your you, you, you just uh, begin right now. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. Uh, our keynote speaker, Dr. Arundhati Hoskari Ma'am is here. I would uh, I, I'm, I feel privileged to introduce her for today's conference. She has been an education consultant for Cambridge International School. Uh, one <gasps> second. Just a second. Some problem. Yeah. Cambridge International Schools, motivational speaker and corporate trainer. She has trained in uh, cyber crime in, uh, she has trained as a cyber crime invention officer. Uh, she's a council member of Maharashtra Education Policy and Women's Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. She's also a member of Global Educators Fraternity. She's a member of a College Managing Committee, Gokhale Education Society's Teacher Training College, Paril, Mumbai. Dr. Hoskari is an eminent educationist for the past 36 years with 21 years in the leadership role as a director, principal and management representative of reputed Cambridge International Schools, IB schools in Mumbai. Mr. Dr. Hoskari is MSc in Zoology, MED, MA in Literature, PhD, ND. HS, ATCL Diploma in Communication Skills Public Speaking from Trinity College, London. Dr. Arundhati is multifaceted, multitasking, trained in international curriculum, pedagogy, and leadership. She is a motivational speaker, trainer, a freelance journalist whose articles have appeared in international newspapers. Four books authored by her are available on Amazon. She has published more than a dozen research articles slash papers in national and international journals. She is a multilinguist who fluently converses in 10 languages. Her voice is recorded for UNO character three languages and is available on UNO official website. She is a trained classical singer, self-taught visual artist, a poetess who has been felicitated in Malaysia and Sri Lanka for poetry. She is a self-taught visual artist who has held solo exhibition of her artwork. She's a keynote speaker, panelist, and moderator for many national, international conferences. She's an avid traveler who has visited 21 countries. Ma'am, you have received many awards accolades on national and international platforms. Uh, she's a passionate educator and a lifelong learner. And we are really privileged to have you today with us. On behalf of VPM Zazitra College of Arts, Science and Commerce, I would like to welcome you once again. And we, I, would I would request um, our team to kindly felicitate Ma'am with a virtual bouquet as a token of appreciation. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would request you to kindly share your thoughts. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, I think it was Prachi. And um, so members of the management, principal, Mrs. Kavita Sharma, teachers and my dear students, a very great morning to each one of you. I am delighted to be with you all this morning. Thank you for inviting me to deliver this keynote address. And uh, Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, what they are called as, is a beautiful concept brought by the United Nations. Let us understand what is sustainable development and how it is different from sustained development why we have to call it as sustainable. In 1987, the Brundtland Commission report that is popularly known as BCR, described sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. This statement is so beautiful and so awesome. And in September 2015, the General Assembly of United Nations adopted the 2030 Agenda for 
uh, sustainable development and developed seven sustainable developmental goals, that is SDGs, I'll be calling them as SDGs and sports, keeping in mind each and every one without any kind of discrimination. The four important areas while developing these 17 uh, you know, goals which were considered are society, environment, culture, and economy that are completely interdependent, intertwined, and inseparable, almost inseparable, all these four areas what I talked just now. So this 2030 agenda for sustainable development has a great promise for the future and hope for the persons with disabilities everywhere. Though not completely explicitly, disability is mentioned in many part of SDGs related to growth, education, employment, inequality, accessibility of human settlements, as well as data collection and the monitoring of the SDGs. It's very easy to establish something or come out with some idea, but how it is implemented, how it is carried out, who will monitor? So there must be some monitoring system. So that also is in place. If sustainability is considered as a long-term goal, then sustainable development paves the right pathway by settling up the processes to achieve a long-term goal of sustainability. Say, for example, a student aspires to become a physicist or, you know, let me just take a simple thing. He wants to become a nuclear scientist, let us say. So without uh, doing any of his high school grades and primary or you know, your, his basic college, he cannot directly appear for research program. So it's exactly like that. So we have to have a proper action plan so that we can follow that. The year 2016 marks the first year of implementation of all these SDGs. All of you know about it, I hope. Now, million dollar question. Is this sustainable development or sustainable developmental goals a new concept for us? Is it a new concept for us Indians? No. The concept of SD, in fact, is the essence of Indian tradition, culture, and wisdom. You may, you may just be surprised. Some of you must have heard or youngsters may not be knowing about it. But in chapter six of Maha Upanishad, and also in Rig Veda appears a verse composed thousands of years ago. Vedic time means minimum 500 years, 5,000 years ago. Ayam nijaha paro veti gunanam lagu chetasam udara charita nam tu vasudhaiva kutumbakam. So what do we mean by this shloka? Now, it is so unfortunate that even in, in back home in India, people are learning Sanskrit all over the world, but back home in India, we have become aliens to our own language, ancient language. This means the meaning of this shloka is narrow minded persons have two different outlooks towards their own common matters, like say, relating to themselves and relating to others. So they will always worry about me, my family. And now, though, don't ask my family means it is not a big thing. Like, you know, earlier India housed to 60 to 70 members in a family that used to be a joint family. People grew up with first cousins, second cousins, uncles, aunts, and everything. Today, join my family, the word my family means me, my spouse, wife or husband, and our children, one or two. People are not going beyond two these days. That is the condition. And what is joint family in today's context? If they keep their father and mother along with them, that is called a joint family. There are people who push the parents out, even the widowed mother out and stay happily. So that is a very unfortunate situation. So what this shloka describes is narrow-minded people have two outlook for themselves and for others. Whereas the broad-minded ones, noble-minded ones, okay? So these people think that the entire world is their own family. Vasudhaiva kutumbakam. The word is split like this. Vasudha eva vasudhaiva. Now, what do you mean by this? Vasudha means it's not the name of a girl. Vasudha is the name of earth, mother earth. We river earth as our mother. We just don't, don't consider it as planet. So Vasudha Eva, one and only. So Vasudha itself, the entire earth itself is my family. What does this include now? 
it includes all the living forms whether it is plant animals microbes wild animals pet animals anything you take under the sun and all the environment your all the five elements and all the people around and your own family that is the concept of vasudeva kutumbakam let's look at the indian philosophy what we have now the whole world okay actually we have the meaning entire meaning of the whole world is a single family is this promises the noble thought this promotes the noble thought of universal brotherhood what do i mean by universal brotherhood this is something to live happily without any discrimination of caste creed race color and ethnicity we respect all forms of life as i already said so there is a symbiotic relation if i respect somebody it doesn't mean that they have to become parasite on me or i have to become parasite on them it is a mutual give and take mutual energy exchange mutual utility or i don't even want to call it as utility it is a mutual existence or coexistence i would call that is the concept of vasudeva uh, kutumbakam india or bharatvarsha is a cultural mosaic if you consider see we have different traditions and uh, but you know at the end of the day we all feel we talk different languages we uh, we uh, you know we follow different uh, ideologies different religions everything is okay but at the end of the day what is our identity in the world our identity in the world is we all are indians our motherland has faced many invasions and tolerated the atrocity of many kinds of invaders who are very harsh and who are very cruel to us and our people have mingled with them absorbed their culture and given our uh, ethos and our culture to them so in our country we have the freedom to practice and profess whatever culture custom religion we wish to do that is the greatest blessing nobody is uh, you know uh, putting us at a gun point okay you have to do this only you can't salute this god or you can't follow this ideology is it a less blessing it is the greatest blessing of all the uh, what a humanity can have the sdg is why i am giving this context is all these sdg that is sustainability development goals are a part and parcel of indian heritage and indian tradition i really consider myself very lucky and fortunate to be born in my country bharat always i am very very proud of it now coming to india india is a very young country it is called in the world so why do why, what do you mean by young country country it be it means our population most of our population is youth so the maxim catch them while they are young is very much applicable to us so all this youth power we have to utilize and also we are one of the fastest growing economies in the world so india has played a important role in shaping up all these sdgs and uh, in the areas like you know whatever different areas balancing economic social and environmental aspects now coming back to india now see i don't have the time to explain all the 17 goals in detail and you, all of you will have read it today i am going to discuss about our country what are most relevant i'm not saying all the 17 goals are uh, need not to be picked up and all that but always we we have to prioritize so what is the need of the hour so government is working in that direction out of that 17 seven goals are picked up for present so once they are in place then the other goals will be taken up that is a beautiful concept so i'll be discussing these seven goals pertaining to our country and what could be our con contribution towards this always we end up blaming uh, he has not done the work she has not done the work what i have done nobody bothers so that that is my focus today so india has launched many programs and action paths or action plans uh, towards the, the achievement of these goals in spite of the challenges faced in the areas of large population we are over populous country our country is growing only vertically because there is no space to expand horizontally all of us know this right and also low per capita income see there is a lot of economic disparity on one hand there is a rich class which is growing richer and richer and there is a poor class that is going uh, poorer and poorer then there is a middle class community struggling to cope up they are neither poor nor rich so 
to keep up their standard they are struggling day and night so this is the uh, proper uh, you know i would describe our country's economics as on today in on a very large i mean very generalized scale so our per capita income is quite low even today but in spite of this lot of major steps have been taken in the direction of uh, you know uh, like um, say for example compulsory uh, pre uh, pre primary education for all and uh, digitalization digital connectivity is uh, you know uh, india is providing and the green and renewable energy sources that also is there and supply of electricity to remote rural areas see we are sitting in all the metropoles like mumbai and we have all the amenities 10 minutes light goes off we are uh, lost like you know we curse everyone we call frantically the electric station we call the society oh why the lights have gone how will i survive think of people who have not seen electricity india is not defined by metropoles few metropoles and posh lifestyle india is 70 75% of them are living in the rural area so providing them the facility is also very very important so now let me discuss uh, the seven goals which india has selected and what all we also can do for that you know the first one is no poverty see all as i told earlier all these goals are interlinked you should understand this so rural employment guarantee act was introduced in 2016 and 17 and uh, about 2 million people including lot of uh, disabled uh, sections of the society have been given employment and also pension and insurance scheme for the workers of unrecognized sector was launched and widows and differently abled people were also given some support by the government in the form of pension then lic cover like you know 130 million people have benefited so far and uh, also government is struggling to provide free and affordable houses for the poor i think about uh, 3.2 million houses have been provided so far it may number may be more the data what i have may be little uh, older then access to health and nutrition then security then education sanitation and you know providing clean and uh, potable drinking water so all these things are covered now you may say i am talking of poverty and why all these things how how are they implemented see poverty means actually staying below the normal line what is required for standard living so we are trying to improve the standards of people this is what the government has done now as an individual what you and i can do whether it's a student or a, you know like a teacher or working or non working any individual what we can do how to combat poverty can we just give food to the street beggars and say oh i have done a great job and i have uh, i'm finishing poverty no you are not and by just giving money or some charity are you putting end to poverty no then how can we do your efforts whatever you are making should be consistent so we cannot perpetually every day go and feed people right so the best way is through education if you want to attack poverty educate people and make them self reliant and self sustainable they how to you know fend themselves and they have to earn their own living that is combating poverty in fact this educational group of educational institutions like vpm group of educational institution was started keeping this in agenda the founder mr n b h kulkarni began this uh, you know school in a humble way in his own house uh, to just to support the and educate work i mean you know children of construction workers see today the vision of this man was big and now even today it is big and you all are growing and prospering now you have so many schools and uh, you know colleges and everything that is the vision even to this day this is not a profit making institution or this is not a, a you know like a business house profit making in the sense i meant in the sense it's not looked at uh, uh, earning money many of the people working here like in the management are completely voluntary you should understand this so what can you do as a student why don't you form a student club you begin a student club i will give you the support and ideas whatever you want to do i am always available but you should take an initiative everything others cannot initiate so make a student club and you know you can start teaching your own maid servants i mean your own uh, bhaiyas and didis in the school train them let them speak little english make them little aware of the rules and regulations 
and uh, call their children and once a week one hour can't we afford so this should be our attitude to combat the poverty we will discuss it at some other time otherwise i'll go on and on i don't want to cut on other things then the next uh, sdg what the government has selected is zero hunger see how poverty is linked to zero hunger if you are poor then you don't have money to uh, eat food also so if you are empowered and poverty level goes down naturally there is zero hunger so to attain zero hunger again everyone should start working and making their own provision feeding their own family but government what it has done mid day meal scheme is launched you know i have visited some of the tribal schools and village schools you will be really surprised do you know why they send their children to school it is not for uh, learning or you know i mean everyone do not have that dream they don't have to square meals to eat they send the children go to school you will get something to eat look at it what kind of uh, life people are leading and then you know then there was a question people used to send the kids only during the meal time and then pick them up and take them to work in the field then you know the teachers and principals they took initiative and they said no whoever comes in the morning and attends all the classes only will get the meals and will get uh, this thing it is not to teach a lesson or show the might it is to ensure that the children are doing a lot of work is done by teachers in the villages and you know principals and teachers they are really working hard so this is how it is and about 100 million primary school children are being fed the number is More, greater but definitely not small and also government has a scheme as you all know uh, ration stream like you know giving food grains at a concessional rate and you know uh, this will actually bring down the uh, menace of stunted growth in children okay then uh, there is also a proposal for uh, climate adaptive agriculture our agriculture is completely dependent on the rainfall so there are people you must uh, you must be reading how the farmers are suffering and all that so last year during covid and all that and when the transport system is hit the farmer has grown the crops and vegetables so whatever they have no means to transport or people are exploiting them asking them at throw away prices sometimes you know people the farmers whatever they have grown they have thrown everything into the river all because they had nothing to store so this is the condition farmer suicides you have heard about so how do we combat this situation or face this situation control this situation by giving them awareness about alternate kind of agriculture like you know uh, uh, say organic farming we can uh, tell them and then you know soil health cards are given by the uh, by the government to the farmers so if you maintain the proper elevation level or you know if you maintain the fertility of the soil and you are able to give so he is called as a green farmer or he is being given this uh, i mean soil health cards that is also excellent then let's move on to sdg 3 that is good health and well being now look at the connection poverty hunger and then comes the good health so many awareness campaigns are being held and you know like uh, institutional uh, delivery for birthing otherwise most of in the rural areas most of the times the birth uh, the process of birthing takes place at home only because they they don't believe in hospitals they don't have money to go to hospital and uh, then what happens is uh, sometimes the baby dies and some, sometimes both mother and uh, baby die in the this thing or sometimes the child is born with deformity it is not because it was formed in the womb deform actually after you take the baby out if the proper oxygen supply is not there for even few seconds because they are all quack uh, quack midwife uh, midwives uh, who attend to these deliveries or sometimes the family members itself so if there is even few seconds delay then you know brain doesn't reach and the children become uh, slow learner or you know they develop uh, disabilities like you know that is the thing so now awareness is being created and then all the uh, primary workers health workers go home and talk to them and you know talk about the health of uh, individuals and um, you know uh, essential health services are provided so this has reduced actually infant and child mortality rates to some extent and free immunization programs are uh, in place for children like you know all the booster doses and compulsory doses because people some uh, in the rural areas are not even aware of this so health insurance at reasonable price also is give, uh, made available and national health policy 
has uh, specified you know targeting universality of primary health care so everybody should get some medical aid that is there now as students and as teachers what can you do just create awareness you don't have to become a neta you don't have to become a abhineta to you know carry on these missions you educate your own people in your own environment your own maid servants and your watchmen and uh, you know or if you have time go and support ngos or you form a club and you know go to tribal areas once in a year and then try to support them so so many ways we can create awareness even sanitary conditions in the village and all that many of these school uh, colleges and uh, you know they have formed these uh, cells and there are certain schools international schools which are adopted the villages so it is managed by the students the school provides a school bus and teachers are there for support but the children plan the students plan senior secondary and post secondary and college level children they go and create awareness camps and collect the clothes so many ways we can help people and even create uh, uh, you know uh, health awareness now let's move on to the next goal which our country has selected that is gender equality ah this is a real real need of the hour i would say though the status of women is improved in india we have a very long way to go even today in villages female feticide and infanticide is a big big problem in rural india actually government has banned or sonography of a pregnant woman to detect sex but you you understand this point anything is possible if you give money so in the rural areas and all that who is going to monitor if you bribe the doctor doctor will happily tell you oh you have a female baby you have a male child you have a female child after 3 months and then if it is a female child still they abort the baby family pressurizes the woman to abort a baby or by mistake if the child is born as soon as the child is uh, they come to the family comes to know it is a female there are instances they kill the child how what a atrocity what how could this horrible thing exist even in today in the 21st century when we talk about big things and you know we are doing this we are doing that you tell me what a government can do government is doing its effort let us stop blaming others and let us stop asking others to do and become uh, let us watch and criticize no that should not be the agenda what you can do as an individual so even if you educate one person if you create awareness that all are equal whether girl child or boy uh, you know a male child or female child that is more than enough not just that there is always a secondary treatment given to the girls in so many families even, see in the um, i mean in the towns and in the metropoles it may be having uh, it may be happening in a subtle way though it is reduced in the a uh, educated community to a large extent if their people if they get two children also both are girls then they don't want to go for the third child they are happy with two daughters and it is going on but still there are people especially uneducated lot so they go on producing if the girls are born if they are good at least they don't kill them so five or six girls and they keep on producing children with the hope of getting a boy many a times it is the boys who abandon the parents and girls go forward and take care of the parents then why do you discriminate and in the villages and everything whatever like uh, even the good food or fresh fruits or ghee or whatever nutritional diet is given to boys and girls ke liye whatever is left over is okay that is okay how wrong this is in both of them are equally important your girl your daughter is going to be a mother she is a creator like it is like a godly state she is going to create a baby try to understand she need to be healthy needs to be healthy so all these things again what government is doing beti bachao beti padhao uh, andolan they have started that is save the girl child and educate the girl child this initiative focus on the comprehensive package of interventions uh, for the girl child including those pertaining to education and protection protecting the girl children and educating the girl children so let us also contribute in our own way we have to always think okay this is what my government is doing what i have to do see ultimately i believe strongly in uh, abraham lincoln statement ask not what your country has done for yourself or you 
but you ask what you yourself has done to the country how how powerful statement this is this applies everywhere it it may be in the family what you have done for your family you ask don't ask what your family has done what your institution has done don't ask that institution is doing to so many people what you have done to the institution what you have done to the community what you have you know contributed towards your country that is very very important and also government has started with a maternity program uh, maternity benefit program actually uh, this is uh, for all the daily wage workers and all that they don't have any forum to fight na so there is no like uh, they don't have any secure job or anything so if an employer there are certain rules uh, put in place and all that but the first six months after the baby is born what they are uh, i mean making sure is uh, the ladies are given their wages so that they can stay at home with the child and uh, take care of themselves now the next goal what i am going to talk is about uh, sdg 9 industry innovation and infrastructure see there is a industrial development is very very essential for the overall growth of a country industry doesn't mean only a car manufacturing or a manufacturing unit and all that everything small or big is an industry say for example our government is struggling for expansion of roads how many bridges they are building and connectivity and roads and annihilating the distances and uh, expansion of railways and aviation and even waterways uh, that is one aspect and uh, renewable energy sector like you know solar uh, solar energy wind energy and bio and uh, uh, i mean um, green energy is a bio energy and then hydro power how it is harnessed and india is also making an effort on uh, in it sector okay information and technology and manufacturing hub through make in india campaign now this make in india campaign which came during 2016 or 2017 made a big impact for our country the efforts have greatly accelerated the fdi fdi means uh, foreign direct investment inflows so that money fund flow is there into the country and everything is make, uh, being manufactured over here and help the country to sustain in average growth so road connectivity and uh, electricity are again another uh, thing to the villages that are being provided then another thing is bharat broadband network limited this initiative is actually aiming to provide high speed broadband connectivity to all village councils uh, in the country village areas in the country one time we are talking of technology we are talking of infrastructure if we don't have the connectivity then nothing will work one more thing i am very proud to talk about this you must all uh, have heard about the beam beam is like you know um bharat interface uh, for money that is like your upi it is an indian mobile payment app developed by the national payments corporation that is npc of india and uh, it is uh, based on a unified payments interface now it was launched on 30th december 2016 and it is available in 20 languages we are a multilingual country right and <coughs> this is the most sophisticated app better than what is launched in us and kudos to our brains like you know we are, we i don't consider ourselves uh, i mean um, Uh, lacking anywhere we have people very intelligent people and very resourceful people our our I, i mean our country is also resourceful then where are we lacking we are lacking in our attitude we are lacking in our civic sense so there are corrections to be made if you make those corrections we are a fabulous country and also the startup india program promotes the entrepreneurship and labor intensive uh, interact uh, intensive uh, economic growth in our country now i am left with two more goals i don't want to exceed time then sg uh, sdg 14 that is life below water so conserve and sustainably use of the oceans and seas and marine resources and also rivers so promotion of blue revolution all of you i am sure in the education industry know what blue revolution is 
for tracking the levels of marine pollution along the coastline by uh, our government has developed coastal uh, that's called as comps uh, coastal ocean monitoring and um, uh, protection system products uh, yeah prediction system sorry not protection prediction system so and also an oil spill management system is there so anytime you can reach out oil spill you must have seen a uh, few like 30 40 years back there was a bombay high oil spill and all the fishes died and they came off on the shore and all that so it keeps on happening oil when it is spilled in water kills the aquatic uh, animals so that also can be controlled in the minute you sense you can reach out because of this digital connectivity and everything and it can be controlled then uh, the integrated national fisheries action plan is in place and it is designed to promote the livelihood of fishing uh, com uh, communities as well as the ecological integrity of marine development then port led development is another thing you might have heard like you know sagar mala program this is for improving the port connectivity port linked uh, industrialization and coastal community development see what all our government is uh, doing and it is now our turn to like you know pull up our socks and contribute to what extent we will do now the last goal what i am discussing today we have selected seven i had told the seventh one is partnerships sdg 17 partnerships for the goals uh, revitalize the global uh, partnership for sustainable development how we how do we do this partnership with the globe what do we mean by this first we have to become strong and then we have to also support others when they are in need this is what see vasudeva kutumbakam is all, already shown by our country and uh, by supplying free vaccines our country our prime minister supplied free vaccine to the needy and the poor and saved so many lives so that is a great thing that is a feeling of vasudeva kutumbakam but again they say charity has to begin at home. We have to strengthen ourselves first. See, I cannot give what I don't have. If I don't have peace of mind, I can't give others. If I don't have money, I can't give others. If I don't have a good attitude, I can't give others. So first we'll have to strengthen our own selves. So for this, what, you know, different uh, schemes they have come up with. A tax reform agenda in the country to optimize domestic uh, resource mobilization is put in place. Uh, like, you know, direct tax reforms and uh, goods and services. That's what we call as GST. All the time we grumble, what nonsense, 18% GST, why I have to give, why I have to give, and I'm uh, bleeding my money. You know, it's not that way. They are putting it to use. Now, to what extent, see, all the ideas have started. Now, what extent it is used and all that, you have to uh, leave it to them and, you know, you have to monitor it. Like, And the uniform and simplified form of indirect uh, taxation also is there. Another thing what is innovative about is we have something now called as Swachh Bharata Cess. Education Cess was there to, I mean, uh, education Cess, whatever 2%, 4% they used to, 3% they used to uh, tax the income tax uh, along with the income tax that was for uh, supporting the marginalized children, like um, educating them. Now, what is happening is like they have started with India, Clean India Cess, that's called as CIC. Otherwise, how the government is going to support? So that we have to think about. Additionally, implementation of the budget and uh, responsibility, uh, responsibility and legislation is ensuring the uh, predictable and sustainable, uh, you know, budgeting is a well long-term uh, uh, to face this, uh, you know, as long-term debt sustainability. That also is in place. Then proactive policy reforms have uh, boosted uh, the FDI following uh, flows during the last few decades. So, as I told, I would like to conclude my speech by telling this. We need to understand one thing. We need to understand one thing. Whatever others are doing, they are doing. But first focus internally as a teacher, as a student, or as any ordinary individual of the country, what can I do? In what way I can contribute? As I told, I don't know whether you already have a youth club in place. If not, then please start. If your youth club is there, come to me. I will share my ideas and we can do some real good work. It is not for social media campaign or it's not for getting the uploads. 
see when our intentions are neat and clean when our intentions are good and when we really want to make a difference and when we want to do something definitely there will be hundreds and thousands of hands coming from all the sides to help us this i have experienced in my life i am telling you very honestly as long as our intentions are correct and always have that focus i am doing it because it's giving me pleasure and i want to make a difference for the community difference for my immediate neighborhood immediate community even swachh bharat abhiyan the government has to levy taxes what a shameful thing for the citizens can't we take responsibility and keep our country clean keep our home clean even today people roam in high end cars like mercedes and uh, you know bmw lower the glasses and throw the wrapper out what is your civic sense i told you we have plenty of resources we have lot of educated lot we have lot of i mean you know another thing education doesn't come by holding on to degrees education is your reform how reformed you are how inter, how you have internalized otherwise you are knowledgeable knowledge is one thing if you put that knowledge to use you become educated so why don't you keep your own house clean i have seen even in the neighborhood especially in the housing colonies government colonies you walk be very careful when you are walking but you never know when somebody from the top floor will throw the kachra down or even throw the dirty water down and you will take a bath this is i am not exaggerating all these things are still prevalent so that is a shameful fact that our government has to introduce cess to clean india and we have to make our school children understand wherever i have worked i have taken my children for beach cleaning i have cleaned the neighborhood and i have made sure that swachh bharat abhiyan is brought about our children along with our children i never sit stand and order even when i was at a director's level i have gone with them and i have swept with my children i have taken the sweep uh, i mean you know the broom in my hand and i have cleaned the streets i don't feel ashamed see always show to people that you can do when i can do my student has no cards to say no i just stand there okay i am standing here it's very hot so please go and clean why the children will clean so it's all up to us up to individuals and teachers whether it's a primary school teacher or a high school teacher or a college teacher or a professor or whether it any school any category teachers have a very very great role to play and a greater responsibility we are shaping the individuals we are definitely working for income but our focus is also outcome you have to understand this see our house doesn't uh, run without uh, electricity and grains our cars won't run without uh, petrol we need money agree but that should not become the main focus you should also understand what kind of noble profession you are in and if any of you students are wanting to become teachers understand the meaning what it means to empower others what it means to share your thoughts what it means to guide others that is a very very powerful profession i would say and with this i hope i have not uh, i mean exceeded the time if i have exceeded i'm sorry so i would like to and thank you once again for uh, you know giving this opportunity to address you all thank you god bless thank you arundhati ma'am your your talk was really uh, enriching